All right, guys. So this question is not that difficult, but a lot of students, grade 12 learners, they struggle with this type of question like crazy, like crazy, guys. Um, if there was one area that I've seen a lot of students struggling with, it's this type of question over here. So I'm actually going to take five minutes off and I'm going to explain some stuff to you guys before we look at this question. All right. So let's quickly do that. If you guys are ever given a graph in an exam, and let's say this is like a three, and this is a minus one, and this is a, a one and a minus four, for example, then guys, let's have a look at something. And then they're going to call this graph. They're not going to call it f of x. They're going to call it the first derivative. Aha. So what we need to understand now, guys, is that the first derivative is another name for the gradient of a graph. Okay. So the y values on this graph are actually the gradient of the original graph. And the original graph, we don't have it right now. But um, so for example, guys, listen up carefully. This point over here, it has an x value of three and it has a y value of zero. So because it has a y value of zero, it means that at that point, the gradient of the original graph is zero. So that point over there is actually a turning point on the original graph. Now, some of you are looking at this and you're like, Kevin, I want some of that stuff that you're smoking because in my opinion, the turning point is there. I understand, guys. I understand that this is a turning point, but we're talking about the turning point on the original graph, okay? Let's look at this point over here. Look at its x value. It's minus one. What is its y value? It's zero. But what do the y values on this graph represent? They are the gradient of the original graph. So this means that the, um, the gradient on the original graph is zero. So that's another turning point. So these are actually the turning points of the original graph. How weird is that? It's, it's, yeah, super strange, hey? Okay, so guys, we need to understand that, all right? Um, now, they might ask you for which x value or x values is the original graph increasing? Now, what so many learners do, they know what increasing means. They know that it's, um, if I give you a normal parabola, we all know that when we say increasing, it's this part over here, right? It's this part here. That's what increasing means. It's where the gradient is positive. So then what a lot of learners do when they ask this, when they get asked this question is they just say that it's all of these X values from there to there, but they're not asking where this graph is increasing. They are asking where is the original f of x increasing. This is not the original. This is the first derivative. Ah, so what we got to understand here, guys, is that when a graph is increasing, what does it mean? It means that the gradient is positive. That's what increasing actually means, right? So that means it's where your first derivative is positive. Okay. Now this graph here is the first derivative. Its y values are the first derivative. So we will look and see where are the y values on this graph positive. And that would be 
over here and over here. And so the answer for that would be where x is bigger than 3 or where x is smaller than minus 1. Okay, I'm not going to say any more about that. Um, I've either helped you right now or I've either completely lost you. Um, yeah, there's a lot more I would want to talk to you about, but I would have to talk to you individually one-on-one -on -one so I can understand exactly where you might be struggling, okay? If I carry on talking now, I'm just going to confuse. All right, so... Okay, so a lot of people are saying that um, that actually helped a lot. So that's fantastic to hear. Let me quickly answer this question. Um, some people want to know um, for which x value is f of x decreasing. Okay, so what we must understand is that what decreasing actually means. So when we look at decreasing, it's where gradient is negative. And that's the same as saying it's where the first derivative is negative. First derivative is negative. It's where the first derivative is negative. But now, what we must understand, guys, is that this graph is the first derivative. So its y values, they represent the gradient of the original graph. So if we want to see where their y values are negative, then that would be all of these y values over here because they're all negative over there. And so you would say then that x must be bigger than minus one and smaller than positive three. Okay, super weird, hey? I know, guys, it's super, super weird. Um, the chances that you get something like this in your exam, well, I'd say it's about a 30% chance that you would get it, maybe 20%. They don't, I don't see it in all exams, but if you do get it, it's so easy if you know how it all works, but it can be a complete waste of marks if you don't understand it. Like it's one of those things that it's very easy or it's very difficult. It's not really in the middle. Okay, so yeah, let's quickly go. Um, right, so guys, I'm gonna now go back to the original exam paper that we were uh, busy with and let's go challenge ourselves and let's go do that question. So here's the first question. Um, so remember, guys, they are giving you the first derivative graph. That is what this graph is. It's the first derivative graph. And what they're saying here is write down the gradient. Like this is enough to, oh my goodness, like this is making maths literacy looking really good right now. Like it's very tempting. Guys, it's too late to change to maths literacy. Forget about it. So it says write down the gradient of the tangent um, of f when x is equal to four. Okay, so I know that x is four, great. Let me go to the x value of four and let's check what's happening here. So the x value is four and the y value is minus nine, but what does the y value of this graph represent? The y value on this graph is the gradient on the original graph. So if the y value is minus nine, it means that the gradient of the original is equal to minus nine. And we know that when you have a graph and you have a tangent, they have the same gradient. So therefore, um, when you have a graph and a tangent, they have the same gradient. And so the tangent's gradient is going to be equal to minus nine. Okay, 9.1.2 says, now this one's interesting. It says, determine the coordinates of the turning point. So many of you watching this right now, you might say, oh, so there it is. There it is. I found it. There's the turning point. You're wrong. They're not saying where is the turning point of, um, they're not saying where's the turning point of this graph. Obviously that would be there. That's easy, right? They're not saying that. They're saying, where is the turning point of the original graph F? Ah, so what we know is that if you have a cubic graph, where do we find the turning points? Well, the turning points are these places over here. And th those are the points where the gradient, which is also the same as the first derivative, is zero. 
okay, okay. So now we come onto this graph and we realize that the y values are the first derivative. So we just want to see where are the y values on this graph? Zero. And there they are at five and at one. So the x coordinates will be one or x equals to five. How weird is that, eh? Super strange. So guys, I hope that that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's how it works over there. Now we've got one more question. It says, um, for which values of x is this graph decreasing? Okay, decreasing. So what does decreasing mean? It means that gradient equals negative or gradient is negative. So that's also where the first derivative, because that stands for the gradient, is a negative. But now, um, this graph here, this graph is the first derivative. It, its y values are the first derivative. So we're literally just going to go see where they are negative, And that would be over here. And so we could say that it's wherever the x values are bigger than 1 and smaller than 5.